Hello, everyone. Well, today is nothing but impressive. The jobs report was incredible. And this time, instead of revising down, they revised it up. But at the same time, that jobs report was so strong. And with wage, wages rising, I almost said wages rising, uh, it's, I think it's going to be inflationary. And if you look at the TNX today, uh, so does the bond market. So we're cutting rates. Rates are dropping. Bonds should be rising. Yield should be falling. That is not what's happening. So interesting dynamics right now in the market. But the bottom line is, this is a very strong tape. We're now in quantitative easing. How many more rate cuts are ahead? I don't know. And if inflation starts rearing its head again via the CPI, PPI, I think we can start cutting, calling rate cuts a done deal. But this strong, and that's another thing. With this strong of an economy, I don't even know how you can even cut rates that much. I know what they're trying to do, but I don't know. I'm just kind of confused. But once again, doesn't matter what I think. Never has, never will, never is going to. All that matters is price. And if you look at this spy chart, our long-term portfolios are loving how this looks. QQQ, awesome. We're nearing a breakout. And, the, and our long-term portfolios, by the way, are at all-time highs. And that's even with NVIDIA and AVGO, my two biggest holdings, not being at all-time highs. So this has been an impressive market. But as I said yesterday, guys, the SPY isn't leading as an index. The QQQ isn't leading as an index. The, I, the RSP, the IWM, the DIA, none of these are leading. What's leading? Utilities. Insurance stocks. So... Whenever I get signals in utilities and insurance stocks, in short term lately, energy seems to be picking up some steam. What are the stocks that I'm going to be putting the most of my capital into? And what stocks am I going to be putting the least amount of capital into? Listen, I'm still super bullish on semiconductors and artificial intelligence in the long run. But look at that relative strength line since the June highs compared to XLU compared to KIE. So that's where my focus is on size. So even though things have been going well and basically everything that we touch is working, there's still stocks that aren't working. But at the same time, I, I don't know how to differentiate between what I want to load up on and what I don't. I've always recommended that if you can be around at the open to make sure that you never get long any of my overnight swing ideas with gap ups, if you only get long with red to green moves, you can do a simple system with my methodology in uptrending markets let's say that there's only one long signal this evening and let's say it's mstr which it is a new long signal for me this evening should have bought it back here uh didn't but i got a signal today pocket pivot point signal also my perfect speculator scan you can put 100 percent of your capital or 200 or 400 percent if you want to day trade it and you have the portfolio margin you can get long 100% of your capital over 176.51 if it gaps down. And if it doesn't close green, get all out and just wait for the next signal the next day. Why I say that is, is because we have so many, for instance, on our end, and by the way, I trim and trail. I, I'm still trimming and trailing because I want to take all that new capital raise. And if I do get a grade A signal, I do want to go all in on a signal. But we got long N and E here. It's up 48% in a short amount of time, and it's barely moved higher. But after each and every new update that it makes a new high, guess what I'm doing? I'm taking some profits and trimming and trailing stops lower to ensure that if the whole position decides to reverse in one day, I'm leaving with profits. Now, you could have gone all in and in and E, and on day one, you're profitable. And even though it pulled back, you're still long all of your portfolio for 48% gain. On that same note, AGX was another recent long signal. That's why there's white arrows. There wouldn't be white arrows here if, let's say, so Duo. Duo has been a big winner. Why am I talking about Duo in my portfolio? Or Tiger in my portfolio? Or FUTU in my portfolio? I'm, I'm not long any of them. I'm long the names whenever I show you a name and it has a white triangle. That's when I'm long. So AGX was a long signal here. Took a little while to get going, but it just does nothing but go up. You trim and trail your stops higher. You take profits on the way up. 
you can do that also. APP was a favorite of mine. I tried to get a limit order here, working a limit and a buy stop above the high. It does nothing but go higher. I'll, I'm now up 43% in this position, and this was a very large initial position. Not so much anymore as I trim and trail, but so far, it's working. It just moves higher every day. But how do I know it's going to act like PI or AXON? And I'm long all these names. Ryan. Ryan was one of the best ones because Ryan was one of the few signals I got right off the 50 SMA that's uptrending that was a pocket pivot point signal that came with a volume and BOP surge. And there are many surges. So once again, and look at what it is. It's an insurance stock. So I went large in this, but I didn't go all in. You know, so it would have been nice if I did go all in. But still, even with that being said, it's only a 13% gain because it's an insurance stock. Another insurance name I got a big size in is AFL. I also got filled on ACGL today. So ACGL is a new position. And then NRG was a new sizable long position. But at the same time, I can't get filled because CEG won't pull and VST won't pull. But how do I know it's going to work like that? And then look at my FSLR. I went along here. Told everybody at the time is extended from its 21 EMA, 50 SMA means it needs to work right away or else you need to start cutting losses. It's now down 10% since I went long. I still have a final piece because my final cut loss is a close, a close below the 50 SMA. So I'm still long a piece. That being said, I'm out over 80% of this position. But FSLR didn't work because it's solar. Solar isn't hot. TEM was a new long position, a little extended from the 50 SMA. No real signal here was trying to get early on a potential move higher. It hasn't done anything. Why? Semiconductors, artificial intelligence isn't hot. I also did a buy stop on hood. It triggered and filled and immediately didn't move higher. So what did I start doing immediately? Cutting losses because this thing should have filled and broke out and zoomed higher immediately. That being said, it's a 4% loss. So for every hood in TEM, you're going to get long apps, AFLs, even IoT bounced off the 21 EMA today, but the lower volume, I can't get long this signal. But you can just rinse and repeat, move that capital into new long positions if you can monitor them at the open. They need to open red and go green. If they gap up, you don't call on the trade until it trades back below the signal price. So if MSTR, let's say on Monday, opens at 180, you set an alert at 176.50. And once it hits 176.50, you look at the price, you see that it's below where we would enter, you then call on the trade. And your first stop is then whatever the lower day on Monday is. But just to sum everything up, you can be aggressive that way if you want. But the only ones that I know to load the boat on right now are utility and insurance stocks. And you're not going to see explosive gains out of stocks like this. 10% in NRG. And I got size there. And you got 13% in Ryan. And I got size there. And AFL. And everything else has been pared back. But none of these are going to be big gains. And that's the reason why I got size. So I'm holding a lot of long positions right now. None of them are that grade A load the boat type signal. Now, remember, I'm looking for signals like Prax to load the boat. And notice in a short amount of time, you get 38%. We don't have any signals like that. Lately, HLNE was one. This was a max screen bot volume truncation day right here. I'm waiting for that 21 EMA long signal, 50 SMA long signal. Just keeps melting higher. Um, HLNE is one that just keeps melting higher on me. And uh, what was the other one? I can't think of it. But, you know, Step was another recent long position when it gave me the grade A signal. Look at how well it's doing. But it's been choppy. It hasn't been smooth. So nothing is really ideal about this uptrend. It's been very good. But make no mistake about it, it isn't perfect. It isn't working out. Exa oh, ADMA. My brain just remembered the other one I wanted. ADMA. Back here. Pocket pivot point signal. Max screen bop. This is the chart that I love. Give me a 21 EMA, 50 SMA entry. Oh, never going to get it. Never do. I am getting it. It just stays extended. So, but it's working. So there are good stocks out there, but I'm having a tough time letting people know this is the one that's definitely going to work. All I can say is 
insurance and utility, and that can change at any moment. I think I actually happened to see SDP today in one of my scans, and that's a short utility play. So maybe we will rotate back into the stocks that I love, like NVIDIA, AVGO. So we'll see. But on this note, tonight, I just have two long signals. MSTR, pocket pivot point signal, looks like a cup with a short handle to me. I'm going to get long above the closing price, 176.51. I'm going to calculate my size from the 50 SMA. This will be my final stop. That way, if it triggers, fills, triggers, fills, and fails immediately, I won't lose a full R of whatever that R is I'm willing to risk. Let's say it's normally $1,000. I'm not going to lose $1,000 if it then fails this low. So MSTR. That's how I'm playing this one. Now, is this a great buy? You tell me. It's extended from the 50 SMA and it's extended from the 20 SMA. You tell me, is that a stock that I would load the boat on? Absolutely not. Ryan, on this day, was it extended from the 50 SMA? No. Was it extended from its 20 SMA? No. It's actually below it. So absolutely not. The best signals are going to come when price is on top of 21 and 50 SMA and you get a signal like that and you get it in a high growth stock. But we don't have that right now. A-Lab is another one I want to get long. A-Lab is actually in the long-term portfolio and I believe I'm red on it because I believe that that's where I entered. So I'm actually down 20%. Might have bought some here. So it's either here or here. Let's assume the worst and it's up there. I'm down 21% on this position, but it is in the long-term portfolio that has a five to 20 year outlook. But on this time frame, the swing time frame, I have a small downtrend line breakout on heavier above average volume after quiet volume and increasing green bop going into that reversal. I'm going to play A-Lab the same way I'm going to trade MSTR. Unfortunately, A-Lab is extended from its 20 SMA, 21 EMA, splitting hairs, and its 50 SMA. So once again, unless there's a volume truncation or max screen bop or pocket pivot point signal off the 10 SMA, I can't go all in. I can't get stupid size. So if I'm going to risk $1,000 to the 50 SMA on this trade idea, my final stop is going to be here. And at the, at the most here, where that high volume bar is. But I'm going to get long A-Lab, hopefully, with the red to green move above 52.34. I still live on Maui for now, guys. So if it gaps up on me and fills, so be it. I'm going to have to deal with that. But what you want is a red to green move over 52.34. You can use a 50 SMA as your final stop. But I recommend being out of at least half of it. If it fails that low, same with MSCR, you can use the 50 SMA or 21 EMA as a final stop. I recommend being out of half of it if it closes below this low. All right, everyone, have a great rest of your weekend. I'll see you back in the chat room. Things are going very well for us. We're making money, but my setups still are not perfect. They're not properly aligned. We're not through the seasonal chop period. We still have an election to deal with. We still have a lot of uncertainties to deal with. Until that's kind of clear, more like in November, December, I don't see me getting super aggressive any one long name unless IOT, Zeta, see where the triangle is on Zeta, just so I don't have a whole lot of this one left, you know, or CLBT, something that I love, some ASPN. ASPN is a stock that I love, but there's no setup here. Unless I get a setup and signal in a stock like that, when this kind of group is leading, you know, you're not going to see me go 25% of my capital or more into any one new long position. It's going to remain 20%. Right now, it's around 10% max capital in a long position. So... Normally, it's five. So it's about 20 names, 5% of your capital in each. That's about what I'm doing right now. I hope this kind of clarifies everything right now because it's not clean. It's not smooth, but it is good. See you on Monday, everyone.